We were just standing in the driveway, and I told them that I had some bad news. And Ann turned, and she looked at me. And she knew. She said, it's Josh, isn't it? I said, yep. It's a warm Monday night, around 9.30. My dad and I are doing our routine, walking the dog right before we settle in for the night. For some reason, my brother, Will, decided to join us for that particular walk. The walk seemed eerie that night, very different and off balance. I couldn't figure out why. Right before we went back inside, my dad stopped at the road's edge. The dog was in the bushes, and my brother was about three feet away near the trash can. We're flying down the road, trying to make perfect timing. We think we're late, but wait, 40 veterans on motorcycles come down the road. Two buses full of men and women are waiting to get off. My nerves begin to bundle together. I can't feel my legs, they're they're shaking so much. Finally, we pull in the gate. They were coming in, the veterans on the motorcycles that day escorted our returning troops. And I don't know, it had to be God's intervention. Because we happened to just get stopped by a sheriff, and we heard this roar coming off the interstate on this exit ramp, and it was, must have been 30, 40 motorcycles escorting three buses back to Fort Jackson. You could feel the entire car getting chills, and we began cheering out the windows Timing was crucial that day, and we couldn't believe how amazing it turned out to be. And we just fell in right behind them like we were family, like we knew what we were doing. So we just scooted on in there and got all up in there. And it took us a little while to spot him, but Lord, when we did. (laughs) We pull into the fort, tears already forming at our eyes, chill bumps filling our bodies and neck hairs rising. We could not find a parking spot. Wait, Dad, there's one, I yelled, wheeling into the parking spot on two wheels, jumping out and running toward the buses. The men and women in matching uniform began to exit the buses, forming into their lines. Everyone surrounding us was cheering, crying, and couldn't contain their excitement and love. My gosh, he was a beanpole but he had arms the size of my thighs. I told that boy, I said, I thought you were supposed to leave your guns when you left the war. After five minutes, but what seemed like 30 minutes, officers released them. Here he comes, Josh is back. I'm so small he doesn't see me. He comes over and begins crying as he hugs mom and dad. Then, suddenly, we make eye contact. Both of our faces light up. I'm fighting the tears back so he doesn't see my weakness of missing him and worrying for him for so many months. He walks over with the biggest smile, scoops me up into his arms, and my brother, my best friend, holds me once again. So he came home and really no one knew what all he had gone through. He, um, they put him at 19 years old on body bag detail, and he had to go out and retrieve the remains of his fellow Marines and piece them back together and send them home. And that created some demons in his head that he just could not get rid of. And he tried for a long time. He went back to school, went back to work. And the only thing that he could find peace with was to go back over there and help. Josh is deployed to Iraq again for his second tour. His military truck was supposed to go out on the front line to battle. He came down with an illness, strep throat, and was ordered to remain in bed. Then, come to find out, his sickness was a blessing in disguise. But the one time that Josh had gotten sick with strep throat 
and the medic would not let him go with his platoon or whatever you, the phrase is that that group was, um, they were wiped out. The truck Josh was supposed to be on was blown up. All of the individuals in the truck lost their lives that day. In 2010, Josh returned to the States. He survived two tours in Iraq. He thought the war was over, but the silent sniper was still on active duty in his brain. Josh sought therapeutic help at the VA, and unfortunately, the shooter got the best of him. And Josh had found his buddies pistol and he took his life and that was sometime on a Monday morning July 13th 2010 I wore my favorite turquoise dress with kitten heeled shoes in the early afternoon Josh's ceremony was held at the Lutheran Church Josh was a avid piano player he loved jazz and if there's ever been what you would consider a New Orleans type funeral, they did it with jazz, with the blues, with praise. 